In 1977, after graduating college at 23, Matt Groening immediately headed for the hills in pursuit of making it in the business. In an interview with Playboy magazine, he describes arriving in 102 degree heat on a Friday night. His car broke down in the fast lane in the Hollywood freeway, where he was listening to the drunken ramblings of a radio DJ who took his last broadcast as an opportunity to criticize his upper management. I imagine Matt sitting in his broken down car on the freeway looking over to the Hollywood traffic and having no idea this was the start of his life in hell. I'm not kidding. LA is great if you have a lot of money. I had no money. I had a bunch of lousy jobs. I was very angry and upset with myself and with the way my life was turning out. And so I started drawing a comic strip called Life in Hell. And I did it as a little Xerox, hand stapled comic book. I would do in my crummy little apartment in Hollywood with the sirens and the police helicopters outside, you know, late at night. And, and I would be just fueled with rage and desperation and existential angst about my situation. Hence the title, Life in Hell. <laughs> So where exactly does one get inspiration for their angsty, depressing, and distaste for authority comic book? I feel a lot of people romanticize Peanuts and its characters, when in reality it was a pretty depressing comic, well in comparison to its contemporaries. When Charles Schultz wanted to, he delved into harder themes, existentialism, depression, and disappointment, all of which are real emotions a kid could have. If you look back at A Charlie Brown Christmas, you see the story of Charlie Brown depressed because he isn't as happy as he thinks he should be. I think there must be something wrong with me, Linus. Christmas is coming, but I'm not happy. I don't feel the way I'm supposed to feel. And gradually, Charlie Brown transformed into a character with a big nose and two eyeballs on the same side of his head. This is the character Jeff, or Akbar. It's hard to tell. They are either brothers and or lovers. It's not entirely made clear. Blinky is the main character, Sheba is Blinky's girlfriend, and Bongo is Blinky's illegitimate son. Blinky's character is Matt channeling his inner angst and putting it on paper. The character of Sheba, Jeff, and Akbar are his observations on relationships. And I used to do comic strips with, with Blinky and Sheba and arguing about their relationships, and my girlfriend at the time would go, you know, that's not fair, you know, to, to you know, because you're doing both sides of the argument and you, the, you make the girl come off uh, worse. So that's when I put Akbar and Jeff into the strip two identical creatures, and I'd have them have the same arguments that I was having with my girlfriend, and you couldn't tell who was who. Except again, my girlfriend at the time said, you think you're Akbar, but you're really Jeff. And Bongo, the youngest, is meant to show a kid's perspective on the world. Like all good comics, Matt often experimented with the way the comic was formatted, which allowed him to further convey his comic. One of my favorite recurring strips is Bongo explaining himself to the silhouette. I did this one, uh, it's with my character Bongo, uh, always, uh, he's always tied up in a room by himself. And there's a little card here with a heart on it, and the two people looking through the door saying, the little fellow just won't respond to love. Now, this is about child abuse, it's about uh, neglect. It was clear from the start with Life in Hell, Matt had a lot to say. Take into account that he grew up a lot in the 70s, which was a prime time for counterculture ideologies and anti-war efforts to shape Matt's mind as well as the next coming generation to question authority. Matt didn't seem to shy away from any topics, which made the comic all the more honest. Perhaps the most striking thing about the comics to me is their sense of atmosphere. The plain white to the minimalistic backgrounds and characters make me feel like I'm in some sort of purgatory reading these. And there's an endless white void, and every turn there's these comic characters with something to say. I can't say many comics ever held that sense over me. Now it was only a matter of time before I addressed the elephant in the room. So The Simpsons started off as a short animated segment in the Tracy Ullman show, and later was spun off into a series where it has been going on since 1989 with no signs of stopping. But I didn't need to tell you that. Originally, Matt was going to pitch Life in Hell to the Tracy Oldman show, but he soon realized he would lose the rights to his characters. So on the spot, he came up with the idea of a dysfunctional family and somewhere along made him yellow. Matt Graining, what's he doing? 
doing in a museum? He can barely draw. It's great to see any artist make their big break, but we don't often look at their work before anybody knew their name. And in this case, I feel this deserves more attention. In fact, finding material for this video is sort of tricky. Most scans of the comic were from 20 years ago, and the resolution is quite evident of that. Aside from the photos and documentary shown here, a lot of the life in hell content is sort of lost. In 2012, Matt Groening officially ended the comic strip after more than 30 years. In a Rolling Stone interview, he was asked how did he wrap up the life in hell? How does it end? He replied by saying, Blinky says to his girlfriend, Just once, I want to hear the sweetest little words in life come from your lips. She says, I forgive you. And he says, Close enough. For some reason, I can't find the final strip. And when I look it up online, all I find is one with Jeff and Akbar. It says it was published in 2012. Did he mess up in that interview, or is the final strip of this comic not online? Maybe we'll never know at this point. They officially wrapped production on Friday the 13th. Although the strip has been done for a couple of years now, you can still see it referenced in Matt's other work. In the Simpsons arcade game, both Blinky and Bongo make a cameo, Blinky even being an enemy. But what is most interesting is some of Marge's in-game animation reveals that she has bunny ears, akin to those of Blinky. Apparently this is Matt Groening's intention, for Marge's long hair to conceal bunny ears to be revealed in the series finale, but was apparently such a bad idea that co-creator Sam Simon immediately shot it down. Will we ever see these characters again in animation? I don't think so, or at least I hope so. This comic is a lot of things, but most importantly, it was a moment in time where Matt seemed to be at his lowest, and every day after coming home from work, he'd write all about his life in hell.